Hello, Shazos. Welcome to another video where I'm joined by my Shazla, Mushu Lee, who's just feeling a little bit like he uh, needs to be around me, so he's up on my desk. Uh, hopefully, he's not too distracting when he puts his head up into it. But today, we are going to be talking about uh, almost everyone's favorite from the Tau faction, Commander Farsight. And the reason is, I uh, recently got given a ticket to a teams tournament uh, to head up and uh, fill in for a team. Uh, and Commander Farsight has been a part of my rosters a number of times. Now, one thing that I'm doing is having Commander Farsight unencumbered by any crisis suits. That's right, I am rolling Commander Farsight solo dolo. And I stand behind the choice. I think he is an amazing tech piece. And I want to run through exactly why he's an incredible tech piece. First thing that we're going to look at is, or that I will point out, is his points. He's 90 points after it went down, which is disgustingly cheap for the data sheet that we're about to look at. So you'll be familiar with a lot of it from Crisis Suits, Movement 10, T5, 3-up save, 6 wounds, OC2, Leadership 6, and a 4-up invulnerable save. Now, if he's only as good as a Crisis Suit, you say, why have we got the extra cost and everything else? Well, for one, he is a commander, so he does everything on twos. His high-intensity plasma rifle is... For all intents and purposes, just a plasma rifle that shoots twice. Uh, very, very good hitting on twos. He, It's not ever fire you rely on to do anything, but it is quite nice. It'll pick up some Terminators or whatever. Uh, and then his melee weapon. Uh, with the tragic loss of Fusion Blades, the Onager Gauntlet, and the Thermoneutronic Projector. Yeah, my little man. We no longer have any credible melee threats except for Commander Farsight. He has two profiles, four attacks on his strike, eight attacks on his sweep, both on two, strength 10 or strength 6, AP 2 or 1, and damage 3 on the strike and damage 1 on the sweep. Makes a lot of sense. Looks a lot like a lot of other melee profiles that are out there. Now, he has uh, two abilities that make him stand out. The first is when he is making an attack against a target that is within 9 inches, add 1 to the wound roll. Now, that is while he's leading a unit. We will not be using that while he's a solo piece. But if you ever get him into melee when he's rocking with a crisis suit unit, uh, that is something because his strength 10 strikes will be wounding most things on twos, if not threes. Then we look at aggressive offense. And this is the big one that makes the solo tech piece kind of work. Once per battle, when this model is selected to fight, it can use this ability. If it does until the end of the phase, each time it makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll, and you can re-roll the wound roll. Now, Mushu, you need to stop sniffing in there, bud. It's just the back of a microphone. There's nothing special. Now, why this is so incredible is how I'm going to detail how we're going to use him to get maximum effect. Now, the next thing as a part of that, so keep that at the back of your mind, the 90 points and the ability and the strike and sweep profiles and whatever else, and let's go to a couple of other things. All right, so the next thing that we're going to look at are these two stratagems, Tank Shock and Rapid Ingress. Now, I am going to go to Tabletop Simulator after I explain all this stuff, and I'll show you guys the combo for how you do it. Uh, but let's start with Rapid Ingress, where at the end of your opponent's movement phase, one unit that's uh, from your army that is in reserves arrives on the battlefield as if it was the reinforcement step of your movement phase. You would have noticed Commander Farsight has the Deep Strike keyword, which means he can Deep Strike nine inches away from enemy units. Then Tank Shock, Charge Phase, one Vehicle unit from your army, which, spoiler, Commander Farsight has the vehicle keyword. Now, what that means is, until the end of the phase, after your unit ends a charge move, select one enemy unit within engagement range of it, and then select one melee weapon your unit is equipped with. Roll a number of D6s equal to that weapon's strength characteristic. If it is greater than that enemy unit's toughness characteristic, roll two additional D6 for each five up, inflict one mortal wound up to a maximum of six. Oh my god, Mushu. <laughs> okay, so Mushu 100% had his face on a key, and I don't know how he does it. He keeps operating my phone and my computer with his face, and I think he's smarter than he lets on. So, we have, and bear in mind, you can use either of the profiles of the melee weapon that's equipped because they're all part of the same weapon, the Dawn Blade. He has a strength 10 profile. You roll 10 dice. And a lot of the things he's going to want to go into, your strength will be higher than their toughness. So you will roll 12 dice for the tank shot combo. Now, all of this 
rolled in together means that you, at the end of your opponent's movement phase, now bear in mind that Rapid Ingress does say that you can't arrive in a turn that you would normally would not be able to. So this is turn two onwards. Don't try and do this turn one. So Rapid Ingress... He comes down, moves in his movement phase. He has to come nine inches away, but he has a 10 inch move. Even if he's behind a building, you come around it and you're probably gonna be standing at least within five inches of them. You shoot whatever it is you wanna shoot with his plasma rifle, then you charge. And because you're so close, it is almost an unfailable charge. I say almost because yes, there are plenty of people that will have stories of failing a three inch charge, even with a reroll. And then after your charge, you tank shock on the way in, doing potentially four to five mortal wounds, maybe if you spike at six. And then you fight, popping his once per game, re-roll all hits and wounds, which is incredibly powerful. Now, let's go to Tabletop Simulator, where I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Alrighty, so here we are in Tabletop Simulator. You can see I've done a little bit of a, a mock battle with some ruins that, as closely as I could find, uh, without actually properly downloading the WTC packs or whatever, which I will be doing. Uh, we have a little bit of a battle going on with some Terminators. we got some Dread Knights out on the flanks. We have Tetras, we have some Broadsides, and we have a Devilfish sitting in the middle. Now... It's the end of our opponent's movement phase. So we can see where they've postured. He's gone for this objective here. Likely going to try and shoot down into our Tetras there. This guy is moving up here. Probably going to try and shoot our broadsides. And now we have a little bit of a view of where some safe places might be. So I spend my 1 CP. I ask my opponent, hey, is that the end of your movement phase? They go, yep. And I go, cool. I'm going to rapid ingress. I pick up my commander far sight and I go, you know what? This area here is actually a really, really good idea because if we assume that like a lot of tournaments do, we are doing uh, all floors blocked out, all floors blocked out. But even with windows open, we can put him just behind here and only a handful of things really like Voldus will be able to see him. The Dread Knight will not be able to, and that Dread Knight is completely obscured behind that ruin there. So we have just found a very safe place to chuck him down. They go through their turn, and then let's just assume that the Terminator unit goes into here. They charge and pile in onto the point because they're wanting to take that away from us. That's up on top of a building. That's not where we want it. And then they pop that Devilfish. So let's just grab him. He's off the board. He is now destroyed. Now, my mouse is moving very slowly because I have a puppy with its head sitting on it. All right. And then, so what we find is that even though we're a vehicle, we have to go around. But, so the Devilfish is gone and the Terminators that can start piling, oh, sorry, consolidating towards the objective. Cool. Cool. No problem. So now our commander Farsight, measuring from the back of his base to clear the building. He needs about six inches to clear the building. So we do that. And then we take him forward. His four is just off the objective. So then we have commander Farsight sitting a measly 5.5, which is a six inch charge. Very, very doable. Very doable. So, Commander Farsight does, does his shooting. Let's say he kills one Terminator. One gets through, they fail, they succeed one four up, fail one four up. No problem. Twos and twos, it's unlikely we roll a one, but again, it's going to happen. Uh, and then we roll our charge. Commander Farsight gets in, we tank shock. So, let's grab 12 dice, and then with our 12 dice, we chuck those in, and we roll our tank shocks. Now, we under-rolled like a mother, and that is actually some very classic J-rolling there. That is some very, very classic J-rolling. Let's try again and see if we can actually get this on the median. Okay, three mortal wounds. Let's just go with that. We kill another Terminator. So now, we pop our full hit and wound re-rolls. So... Because we want to use the three damage, we're going to use our strike profile. So we're hitting on twos. Cool. And because we're wounding, our, uh, sorry, we've got a strength 10. They've got a T5. We are wounding on twos with three rolls. Excellent. So now we have four wounds on them. It'll be on their invulnerable save. They fail to, we kill the last two Terminators. And all that's left is a single Grandmaster. 
Now, you might think, okay, that dude's still on the point, but let me break it down again. 90 points worth of models just killed four Terminators in a series of activations. In a world where there's something with wound caps or whatever else, that becomes even more valuable because we are hitting them in the shooting phase, the charge phase, and in the fight phase. And then if we lose him, that's 90 points gone. We still have 1,920 points left of our army. Solo Commander Farsight is something I love playing with. And even from, and this is something that you always need to think about when you're looking at different tech pieces, Farsight has a psychological effect on people, which means that they may misplay by trying to screen him out or do whatever and allow you to be more aggressive on other parts of the board because they have held units back to screen him from doing what he wants. But a base that small, and granted, the new Farsight, which you should be using, has a slightly larger base, which, fine. But even still that, it is not an enormous base. It's not, like, it is still more than half the size of this Nemesis Dreadnought base. So... That means he can get into a lot of different places that your opponent doesn't want to, and with good planning, he can do it very, very safely. He is still a 4-up invulnerable save, 6-wound model, which means that even if he gets targeted, if your opponent under-allocates to him, he is still coming in and doing his damage because Farsight doesn't bracket. This is just a little tech piece that you guys can use in your game. And I, let me know what you think. I've been using Commander Farsight on his own for quite a while. I quite enjoy it. Obviously, there are a lot of ways that you can use him for the plus one to wound using Cyclics or Flamers if you're in a very, very Horde sort of heavy meta. Uh, having said that, even with Horde metas, I'd probably still go the Cyclics if it were me, but that's just kind of the world we're in because Mathematics exists. I know there's people that don't like the Cyclics. And if you want to play something else because it's just what you enjoy, then don't let anybody tell you not to. My videos are always aiming for that 0.1% that you will need to consistently win games and win tournaments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I am my own sponsor of this video. Uh, we have had our website go live with a bunch of merch and also Tau tracking tokens so that you can track your For the Greater Good rule with spotters, guided units, and the spotted unit that they're targeting. Uh, all of these are able to be shipped internationally, and for anybody that's been reaching out to me, trying to find out the best way to support me and my channel, this is absolutely it. My website has nobody else that dips into my pockets, except for the Australian government with GST, but I can't stop that anyway. So... Thank you very much to all of my incredible patrons who make all of my videos possible. If you would like to join them, you can either go to patreon.com slash Pantheon Studios Australia and join at any of the tiers to get access to the Discord, or you can click the join button right down below you right now in YouTube and get access to the Discord as well. These incredible individuals make it so that I can keep doing content that I love. I am so appreciative to every single one of them. I hope you guys enjoy this short little tactics video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>